Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. Happy Wednesday to you guys. There's just so much I need to talk to you guys about robotics and teaching robotics. So today is going to just be jam-packed with just a bunch of stuff. You know, if you go to a buffet, you just, there's just so much to eat. This one's going to be so much to talk about robotics. So if you want to stay for the conversation, stay with me. And after watching this video, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right there. Come on, I know you can do it. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about a boatload of things. Number one, uh, a new challenge from the World Robotics League is definitely going to be up number, number one. Um, I'm definitely going to continue the conversation that I started yesterday with distance learning and live sessions. I'm definitely going to talk about registering uh, for first Lego League. And definitely talk about just you know what we're going through as far as robotics and how to navigate your school and expectations so let's jump in first with a challenge from the World Robotics League that if you're interested those of you that want to hit up the link in the description uh, for the challenge and for the you know details and what to do to register your student or students or a team let's go to that Okay, like I said, this is brought to you from the folks at the World Robotics League. Check the description for the link that I've left you to find out more about signing up. So this is going to be their challenge number two. It is called Robots to the Rescue. And I'm going to go ahead and there's some parts I'm going to basically just summarize. And there's some parts that I'm actually going to be reading to you um, about this challenge. So this is supposed to simulate a bridge crossing and the bridge has basically washed out down below. So let me go ahead and read to you about this challenge and then I'll go over some of the rules about it and just, you know, introduce it to you guys, let you guys know, you know, how this works. So this challenge is geared towards making you think about uh, innovative ways to use robots and realize that robots need to travel a variety of terrains. Sometimes you can have robots that get a flat ground to travel on, and sometimes you get terrain that can be quite challenging, like this one. The challenge this time is inspired by search and rescue robots that have to work in hostile terrains where movement by rolling on the ground might not be possible. This challenge is based on a rescue and assistance mission to a remote location that has recently encountered devastating floods. Due to the unique terrain, which is very hilly and has lots of trees, it is not possible to provide an air-based rescue. As the chief rescue engineer, that sounds pretty cool, it is your job to create a robot that has to navigate this treacherous terrain. In terms of the mission, your robot has to start at the start line, which is right here, and the actual official starting line is right here, so your robot needs to be behind that. And... Um, your robot has to travel on the ground and then cross a fast moving river using a partially submerged bridge and then deliver supplies, which is going to be this right here. These two two by eight bricks with a little uh, handle. Um, and you're supposed to deliver those supplies to people stranded on the other side of the bridge and drop um, the supplies in the supply zone. While crossing the bridge, you must make sure that the robot does not touch the bottom of the bridge or the surface of the table in this case here. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some of the rules for this challenge. Um, no part of the robot may cross the starting line when starting. So right now, my robot would be behind the starting line. Um, while traversing the bridge, the bottom of the robot must not touch the table surface at the bottom, which would be, you know, considered water or debris that's traveling underneath this bridge. Um, your robot must land on the other side of the bridge and completely disengage with the bridge. They're giving you extra bonus points if you're able to, your robot is able to come back to this beginning platform. And this supply bag 
um, can be mounted on your robot before you start. So it's a really cool challenge. Um, no, I have not um, started working on this yet. I'm just going to introduce this challenge to you guys and just let you know that this is available to you from the World uh, Robotics League. Again, I left you the link if you're interested. Uh, for those of you that, you know, just want to expand your robotics uh, knowledge and be challenged, this again is Mission 2, Robots to the Rescue. It's a really cool mission. Okay, so very cool, the World Robotics League. Again, check out the link to figure out everything. It's basically a just a year-long competition. Unlike First Lego League where there's seasons, um, World Robotics League is just going to be throwing out challenges just throughout the entire year. And what's really cool about that is you can do that straight from your house. You don't necessarily have to be you know, hooked up at school or things like that. So definitely check out their site, figure out what's going on, and decide if that's for you, okay? All right, let's talk about item number two. And that's going to be, um, I just knew that when I threw that out, I would just get so much, my emails were flooded this morning uh, with just emails from you guys. And thank you so much for your feedback. You guys had some great ideas. What we're talking about is live sessions. If you missed yesterday's video, I basically said that our school is you know, going to start off like many of your schools are with distance learning and where the students are at home online. Um, but, you know, for me, I'm supposed to do live sessions with my students. And I was just throwing out some, you know, if you guys had any ideas about what to do for those of us that are going to teach robotics live sessions, just some ideas of what we can do if we're doing live sessions, but our students don't have robotic items at home. So let's talk about the first one. The first one that a lot of you guys threw at me was the Virtual Robotics Toolkit. Thank you so much for that. And here's what I love about it is, you know, the students can program at home. The students can, you know, see the robots actually, you know, moving around and doing what their programming is, you know, telling the robot to do. I'm only stuck in a situation, though, where I can't guarantee that all of my students are going to be able to get hooked up with that. Uh, the first thing is the cost. The cost is $611 for 30 students. So there is a cost involved and it's also something where, you know, if your school is strapped budget wise, that might not be an option. But the biggest hurdle for me might just be that the requirements is that the students would have Windows 8 or higher. So it's one of those things where they have to be running a certain type of system on their computer to be able to navigate the robotics, um, virtual robotics toolkit. So that's just another hurdle in the, in the equity issue here where, you know, it, it's just going to be hard for me to say, okay, half of you were doing this, half of you were going to have to figure something else out. But I love the idea and, you know, it would just be nice if there was a virtual robotics, you know, program where everybody can run it and I could be guaranteed that everybody can run it. So we're going to still keep plugging away. One idea that I wanted to throw out that, you know, those of you that teach robotics and would have to do live sessions, I thought we could do something fun to maybe just get going. Obviously, the first week, you know, it's just... I don't plan on teaching a whole lot just because, you know, students that are going to be new to this, we're going to have to just navigate how to get online, how to join in on a session and get to know each other. But when we start to learn about robotics, it'd be kind of cool if we can just start off with the kit, figuring out what's inside, um, going over terminology, vocabulary about robotics, and then... I always love to play bingo with my class. And what would be cool is if you can, let's say you had a five by five bingo grid. Let's say you had five vocabulary words that kids would learn in robotics, like sensor or gear or things like that. And then, you know, at home, they would write in, maybe you can send them a Google Doc and they can fill in their you know, boxes with the vocabulary words, and then you can play bingo right there on your in your live session where you can say, okay guys, put a bingo, you know, one of your bingo pieces over, you know, 
a, a sensor that can detect, like, you know, you can't say light, but maybe you can say that can detect distances or maybe, you know, some other uh, definition where the students can be placing bingo pieces and, you know, give out small prizes uh, when you guys do eventually meet. Um, but just an idea where, you know, you can engage them in vocabulary and let them know, hey, you need to learn this so that when you play bingo, you'll know exactly where to put your piece on. So I'm just throwing that as an idea that I thought, hey, that'd be kind of neat, you know, making vocabulary a little bit more exciting than, hey, just write this down and memorize it. Um, so keep your ideas coming. Um, I don't know what when you guys start uh, school, but we're going to be starting on August 10th. And that's basically what I'm going to try to do until until then is just start to get these ideas and, you know, figure out how we're going to start the year and you never know how long it's going to last. But it's just one of those things where, you know, teachers, we just like to collect a lot of ideas and then have them ready, you know, when it's time to go. So the next thing I want to bring up is first Lego League and you know, registering. I know August 4th is the kickoff for uh, replay for those of us doing First Lego League. But I'm going to throw this out with you guys. And there is somebody that was thinking that like I was, um, you know, if you register a team or teams and the way schools are right now, if we're not able to get on campus, we're not able to get to our robot game board, um, I emailed um, one of my, you know, representatives this morning and I said, if I register my team and we can't get into our class, let's say because, you know, our season goes from the soon as school starts to about December. And I already know somebody emailed me and said, hey, we're not going on campus at least till November. So, you know, who knows what's going to happen to their season. But I'm thinking about just cost that, you know, the registration is not cheap and the, you know, the set is not cheap either. So I basically emailed them. I haven't gotten a response yet, but I said, if we somehow don't manage to get into class, into school, and my students can't even use, you know, the kit, am I going to get my money back? And so I'm still waiting for a response, but I'm going to hold off on registering until I can get an answer on this one because I don't want to register and then we don't even have a season and then you know if we're not guaranteed money back I just don't want to be unwise and spend money that you know we didn't even get anything for so I would love your response your rationale for this um, I know I've gotten a flood of emails from first saying that they're working on you know re some type of remote competition but for us that won't make any difference if we can't even practice because you know we're not able to get together so it's just one of those things where I was thinking about it somebody else thought about it too as far as what if we can't even meet what good does registering our team do but we'll have to just wait and see like you know we're waiting and seeing for a lot of other things and lastly I just wanted to be an encouragement for those of us or for those of you that are teachers and we're going through this crazy time. It's just, there's so many of us in the same boat. So I guess what I'm trying to say is don't freak out. Um, you know, figure out from your principal or your district what the expectations are. But, you know, like anything new, like a new curriculum, you know, there's going to definitely just be a learning curve. And hopefully your administrators and district are like mine where they just like, hey, let's just take this slow. Let's just figure it out. You know, they're not asking for the world. They're not asking for you to be experts. Um, you know, you're, we're going to all have to navigate and be experts at um, Google Hangouts or whatever type, you know, platform you're going to do for live sessions, um, distance learning. You know, we didn't really fully do distance learning from March to the end of the year. So, you know, starting when your school starts, you know, now it's going to be mandatory that kids show up, you take attendance and things like that. So there's just so many brand new things. And, you know, like, you know, when we when you go to conferences, they're like, 
Don't try to understand everything at once. Don't try to digest everything. Just take bits and pieces, learn one thing one day, another thing another day, and eventually, you know, divide and conquer, right? So, you know, as far as starting the school year, there's so many people in the same boat. So don't freak out. We got this. I've already gotten lots of emails from teachers just coming together saying, hey, let's try to figure this out. Let's try to just be a community here where people don't feel like they're alone. So those of you that teach robotics, those of you that maybe teach something else, you know, we'll figure this out. We will, you know, teachers, that's the one thing I know is kind of our, you know, our big thing that of success is, you know, we're flexible. We're able to roll with it. You know, our principal says this and you're like, okay, I was going this way, but now I'll go this way. So we're super flexible, we're super creative in going, okay, let's figure out how to solve this problem because that's what we that's what we do, right? So we'll figure this out, okay? So um, here are some updates before I leave you today. Um, all of my marble run slots have been taken. Thank you to my volunteers that said, I want to have a marble named after me in their country. So you don't have to worry about volunteering for the marble run. That will be next week. And also, you know, as far as all of this going on, Mr. Hino's with you. So feel free to email me at hinolegorobotics at gmail.com if you guys have any questions of starting the school year. I can try to answer it, you know. And we have a boatload of experts that always will put comments and have suggestions. So feel free to use this as your, you know, platform to, to voice your concerns, get help, because we're with you, okay? All right, guys, you know my motto, we got this. It, it never changes. Whatever comes, we got this. We'll just work together to figure this all out. Okay, guys, I'm Mr. Hino from Missing Hino's Lego Robotics. I'm out. We got this. 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 We got this.